The question, of course, is always where? Where do I go to invest? I can't exactly buy something in my neighborhood. It's really, really expensive. That's what a lot of people, at least in California or in Australia or in the East Coast, in the high-priced markets, it's not that easy to just go buy a bunch of properties when they're really expensive. So where do I go? Um, first and foremost, you want to be somewhere near jobs. That is probably the most important aspect. Got to be located near jobs. And when I say near jobs, I mean within 10 to 15 miles of a job base and a good, solid job base that's not going anywhere and it's diversified, not just dependent on one company like the auto industry in, in Detroit. That didn't work out so well. Or back in the 80s when Texas was totally reliant on oil. That's why Texas is so diverse right now because they learned their lesson. They were too reliant on one industry. So you want to buy your real estate near jobs that have lots of diversification. Second, you want to be near people. Um, usually when there's jobs, there's people. So we want to be in areas that are, that are increasing in population or at least holding uh, their population because we want people living in our properties, <laughs> right? People with jobs living in our properties. Okay, I personally want to be away from the foreclosure meccas. Um, so many people ask us, why aren't you investing in Phoenix? Why aren't you investing in Vegas or Florida or parts of California where there's so many foreclosures? And I say, because when you go to a place like Phoenix where some of the suburbs of Phoenix are 100% investor owned because the whole suburb went in foreclosure, investors came and bought those up and rented them out. So now you've got entire towns that are rentals. Now what's going to happen to that town? Are, is crime going to increase? I think so. Are the neighborhoods going to kind of go down in quality? Most likely because that's what happened. We want to be in neighborhoods where it's mostly owner-occupied and we got the one or two foreclosures in that neighborhood. I like that better. Plus, the other thing is when you go to a place like Vegas where 60% or so, the majority of properties for sale are distressed, you're not necessarily getting a deal. You're getting retail now, right? If ever, if ever, it's all the same price at that point. So that's just my personal opinion. Lots of people will disagree with me. I'm sure people are making a lot of money in those towns. I just personally don't want to be in the investor meccas. I want to be in areas in the country where the jobs are there and the population's there and it's steady, but we still are getting a nice trickle of, a nice, this is an investor talk, a nice trickle of foreclosures to get good deals, but not so many that it, it ruins a neighborhood. Just enough that we get the best deal on the block of owner-occupied homes that are well cared for. Um, and away from expensive marketplaces, because there's so much volatility in the expensive marketplaces, I want to be in an area where the average home price is $150,000, because if it goes down 10%, what is that? That's $15,000. But if I bought a property in an area where the average home price is $500,000 and it goes down 10%, that's $50,000. That's a big difference. So I would rather be in an area where I have less to lose and where it's more stable. And then, of course, landlord-friendly areas. If I'm going to own a property as a rental, I want it to be, uh, I want the law to be in my favor, meaning if my tenant decides to stop paying the rent, I want to know that I can evict them and get someone in there who does pay the rent. There are some states that will say, no, your tenant should be able to stay there. They're having a hard time. Mm -hmm. You're a rich landlord. You can, you can handle it. I want to be in a place where there's personal responsibility and where my tenants expected to pay. And if they don't, they have to leave. And you can call it heartless, but I'll give my charity a choice. <laughs> but an investment is an investment. So let's talk about California or the high-priced markets versus the Midwest or the, you know, the, the areas between the coasts. A California median home price now is 318,000. That's down a couple hundred thousand than a few years ago. So it's real low. That's still a lot of money. Um, the median rent is 1,300. So remember I said I want to see 1%? So on that $300,000 home, I would want to see $3,000 in rent. That's not happening. You're not going to see that in California. Now in a place like Dallas or Cincinnati or uh, Indianapolis or Atlanta, we might find, I'll use Dallas, average home price is $127,000. And the median rent's $1,300, same as that $300,000 California house. So wouldn't it make more sense to buy 
three Dallas houses instead of the one California house and triple your rent. I think, I think $3,900 sounds a lot more interesting than $1,300 per month. I don't know about you. Um, that's a $19,000 difference in cash flow. $19,000 difference if you choose California over uh, the Midwest. Now, if you, if you waited 10 years and you were just earning that $20,000 in cash flow every month, every year, after 10 years, that's 20,000 times 10, that's about you know, $190,000 in income you've made out over 10 years. Whereas with the California home, you, know, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be getting that. So you would be buying the California home with the hope for appreciation, right? That's why you'd buy here. Well, do you think that California home is going to go up $190,000 in value over the next 10 years? Will that $318,000 house go back up to $500,000 in 10 years? I don't think so. I really don't think so. And let's, talk, uh, let's look at some of these homes. So $100,000 home in California is probably going to be a C neighborhood, which is a little bit rougher, lower middle class, not so good schools, probably higher crime, and lower rent. So it'll rent for around $850. Whereas in a $100,000 home in Dallas or Cincinnati or Atlanta, it's going to be in a B neighborhood, a nice neighborhood, a place you'd live, a place you'd want your kids to live, good schools, uh, rehab like new, and rents for about $1,100. And your tenant's probably going to stay because they're not getting shot at. Um, <laughs> if you wanted to even go cheaper, you could buy two $50,000 homes in Memphis or Kansas City um, in a B-minus neighborhood, which is, you know, a lower middle class, okay schools, also rehabbed, that would rent for about seven fifty dollars each, so $1,500. So again, you would double your money by buying outside of California. Thank you.